Next on our list is an electronic expansion valve. An electronic expansion valve is really cool, but I don't have one to cut open to show you all the parts. I'm gonna show you one live towards the end of this video, but if you check out Engineering Mindset, he's got a fantastic video with animation showing how these work. I'll put the link in the description with some other information. So let's go back and first look at our thermostatic expansion valve. Our thermostatic expansion valve is measuring the actual suction line temperature. Then it's also measuring the suction pressure that's essentially converted to a saturated temperature. Actual suction line temperature minus suction saturated temperature equals superheated vapor. So this TXV is trying to maintain superheat. Now imagine if I took all of the top part of this where we have all these old fashioned controls and took this off and I replaced it with a very specific type of motor. Now this isn't a motor that just spins. Imagine this motor just has a whole lot of positions. Let's say it's 1600 positions. So this motor has 1600 positions between close and completely open. It's pretty precise. So this motor opens and closes with all these different positions. We call that a step motor and that steps the valve open or steps the valve towards close. Very precise. You wouldn't even be able to see one step, how small it moves but we're gonna need something to control this new step motor. So we're gonna to have to add in a control board, an electronic control board. Most new units now are having some kind of electronic control board anyways, so they can just adapt it in. So this control board is gonna tell this valve how much to open and close. So we have an electric motor here, opening and closing this valve. The control board can tell that valve how much to open and close, but the control board needs some input information to go off of we're gonna need a component to check the actual suction line temperature. So we're gonna use a component called a thermistor. A thermistor is nothing more than a resistor that changes its resistance with temperature. In short, it's just a way for the control board to measure the actual suction line temperature. But we also need to know our suction saturated. So we're gonna use what we call a transducer. A transducer measures the suction pressure. The control board can then convert that to a saturated temperature. So if we know the actual suction line temperature, and with the transducer, we know the suction pressure converted to a saturated temperature, it can then monitor superheat. What's really cool about that is because it's a control board and it's digitally communicating, we can convert it from one refrigerant to another very easily. By simply on the control board telling it what refrigerant we have, it'll automatically adjust that pressure to the new saturated temperature. In the old days with a the thermostatic expansion valve, we had to replace the entire valve to use different refrigerants. With many of the EXVs, we can simply tell that control board what refrigerant we're working with, and it changes automatically the pressure over to a saturated temperature. So this control board knows what the superheat is. And because it's a step motor with 1600 positions, it can finally adjust and open and close precisely what it needs. A lot of times you'll see these electronic expansion valves keeping a superheat at five degrees or less sometimes. Because it's so precise, it's gonna maintain to protect the compressor. We're gonna make sure that we don't ever get liquid refrigerant to the compressor. At the same time, it's also gonna be able to open more so we allow enough refrigerant to the evaporator to absorb the heat that we need. So it's pretty neat how that works. Some applications we can actually go in and change what the superheat setting is. When we get to commercial systems, a lot of those units we can change what superheat we want. So if we have different products or different needs, we can adjust it right on that control board what superheat we want. So instead of a TXV having to open and close and adjust it, that electronic expansion valve will actually open and close as it needs. An electronic expansion valve is kind of misleading because really it's just a step motor valve with the control board with the other sensors for it all to happen. But essentially it's working the same way as a TXV. It is monitoring superheat and it's trying to maintain superheat. We still charge it the very similar way that we do with a TXV. We want, if it's residential, we'll make sure we have enough subcooling coming in. If it's commercial, we'll make sure we have a clear sight glass and make sure that we're not over 80% on our liquid line accumulator. And it, it charges just like a TXV, except it controls and maintains that superheat at a much finer amount. Now, another cool benefit behind these electronic expansion valves is the fact that it can also work as a solenoid valve. Remember in an earlier video, we talked about solenoid valves doing automatic pump down and also preventing refrigerant migration. Well, these electronic expansion valves can force that valve entirely closed so that we can end up with an automatic pump down. We can pull all the refrigerant out of the evaporator coil. If it's commercial, we can have a control out there that the pressure switch shuts the outdoor unit off. But the way we prevent the refrigerant from migrating into that evaporator coil because this one component works as two different components. So it's pretty neat how it works. So let's go and see a live video of this working. Now, if you've ever seen Chris with HVACR videos, go check him out. 
He does these recordings live all the time. When I try to do these recordings, I found it's quite difficult to do them in place, especially with the fans running, the echo off the box. So it's amazing how he does those videos. Check him out, he's the best commercial guy I've seen personally doing these videos. I love his thought process on it. But I'm gonna give you an example just for the teaching purposes, and this is gonna be on a walk-in cooler, but it would work the same way with a residential air conditioner. This is our electronic expansion valve, and really it's misleading because all it really is is a step motor connected to a valve. This right here is a motor, and it's got, I forgot how many different steps in it, or different positions, if you will. So this can open fully or close fully like a solenoid. But really there's going to be a control board, and it opens and closes however many steps it needs to maintain the control of your refrigerant into the evaporator. Our liquid line is going to be feeding it liquid refrigerant on one side, and on the other side we go to our distributor where we distribute the refrigerant to multiple locations. And it's a step motor because it has multiple steps in place. Some people say, why is it called a step motor? And I like to say because it never knew its real motor. Here we have this blue wire, and this blue wire is really two wires, and it's a sensor. So we're going to pull this sensor out. Thermistor. It's changing its resistance with temperature. So as the temperature goes up and down, it changes the resistance, and the control board can read that. So this component is actually going to be inside of a little copper tube that's brazed to the side of the suction line. So this component right here is measuring the actual suction line temperature for the control board. So it's measuring the actual suction line temperature, which is very important, if you remember before. Now if we continue on our little quest, we'll see that right here we have another component. This little component is a pressure transducer. It converts pressure into electrical signal. And it's hard to see in the picture, but it's actually piped to our suction side, or suction line. So because it's piped to our suction line, it's measuring the suction pressure. The control board is going to convert that pressure into a saturated temperature. So now we know the actual suction line temperature and the suction saturated temperature. The control board can read and see what the superheat is exiting the evaporator coil. So here we have a control board, and what this is doing is it's monitoring the actual suction line temperature and subtracting the suction saturated from the transducer. So it's monitoring what the superheat is. We can go into this control board, we set our program review, we can go down and actually change what the superheat is setting for. I believe this one was set for 5 degrees of superheat. Now remember we said we didn't want ever below, go below 5 degrees of superheat to protect the compressor. What's interesting about this, because it's an electronic expansion valve, it can maintain it at 5 degrees or even less without flooding the compressor. It's very accurate. We have this one set for five. I still like to have that peace of mind knowing we're not going to damage the compressor. Also, the distance we have back to the compressor is important. So this is doing that. This is on a walk-in cooler, but it still works the same way as for a residential system. This just does many other things as well, just like a residential unit would, such as it's going to control our fans, it's going to have timers in here, on-off cycle, and we have alarms. So if our temperature gets too low, the alarm will sound. If our temperature gets too high, the alarm will sound. One more point I want to bring out is most units I've found use a pressure transducer to convert that pressure to a saturated temperature. But some units actually use two thermistors. They'll put a thermistor on the actual suction line, and they'll also put a thermistor right here because I know the temperature of the coil here should be at saturation. So it takes the actual suction line temperature of this thermistor minus the temperature of this thermistor at saturation and is able to monitor superheat as well. It is one other way of doing it, but it's still monitoring superheat.